Yo, what the hell's going on guys? Welcome to your very first responsive design tutorial and in this video we're just going to go over what responsive design is. <laughs> okay guys, so before you dive in headfirst into what is quite possibly the best responsive design tutorial out there at the minute, um, you're probably going to want to know a couple of things. And the first thing, at a bare minimum, you need to know is HTML and CSS. So if you don't know how to code up a website in HTML and you don't know how to style it using CSS, then you probably want to brush up your skills in those two areas first of all. Now, I've got tutorial playlists on both of those things on this channel, so I'll leave the links to those down below. The second thing you might want to know is JavaScript and a bit of jQuery. And this is beneficial, but not essential. And it's going to be beneficial for when we start adding additional functionality for our website on mobile devices, such as a touch drop down menu or something like that. So why the hell do we need a responsive site anyway? Well, people are going to be viewing websites these days on many different devices, whether that's a phone or a tablet or the desktop or even a watch, you know. And basically, it's our job as developers to make sure that when they view that website, it's going to be easy to use and easy on the eye, no matter what device they're viewing it on. Therefore, we're going to make our websites responsive. And this just means that the design will respond to the specification or the width or the height of the device. Now, responsive design is not something that should be an afterthought or some kind of side order to your desktop website, right? It should be thought about from the very start. Now, when responsive design first emerged and people started viewing websites on mobile phones, then a lot of people just had static desktop websites and they'd employ someone to come in and say, hey, look, you need to make this responsive so it looks good on a mobile phone. And because it's already been coded for a desktop, then a lot of the time we'd have to hack at the code to make it look halfway decent, all right? So that's why we don't want it to be an afterthought. We want to start thinking about it from the start. We want to think, hey, what device or what devices are our users going to be looking at this website on, okay? And if they're going to be looking at it from phones or tablets or anything like that, then you need to think of responsive design from the very start so that we can plan our content efficiently with all devices in mind and we don't have to hack at the code when we come to make it more responsive. OK, and responsive design is very, very important. There's tons of new devices coming out every day, like I say, which allow users to browse websites. So it's no longer just the norm to view a site on a desktop. Look, I've got a girlfriend who uses a phone all the time to watch or view websites on. Right. She barely ever goes onto a desktop or a laptop. So if she doesn't like the look of a website on mobile, she isn't going to give it a second chance on desktop. So it's very important that if you want people to view your website on mobiles, then you need to make it look good. People are not forgiving these days. They'll probably give your website 10 seconds. And if they can't use it, they'll never come back. All right. So if you don't make your website very mobile friendly, you're going to miss out on a big chunk of viewers viewing your website or potentially viewing your website. So... This is what the playlist is going to look like. First of all, we're going to take a look at an example of a responsive site so you can see for your own eyes what it's going to do. Then we're going to talk about the tools that we need to make a responsive site and they are the meta viewport tag and the media query. So we're going to go into those into some depth. Then we're going to start building a simple responsive website from scratch. So we're going to code up the HTML and CSS and make it responsive. Okay. Then finally, we're going to take a quick look at responsive images and the future of responsive images. And then finally, at some responsive frameworks and grids. All right, guys, that's it for this quick introduction. Um, don't forget to subscribe, share and like, and I'll see you in the very next tutorial.